to you and me, Muhammad, in the four tiers. So we're talking about delivery complications. We can see these in the ER here. Luckily, we have a NICU and we have a GYN service that will sort of come help if there are any sort of deliveries coming. Uh, but in case you are in a hospital that doesn't have these, things you should know, things that can happen, you should be aware of. So, quick outline, precipitous deliveries or deliveries that's going to occur, not a setting of an OB cell person where you're the person doing it. We'll talk about some shoulder dystocia, breach deliveries, umbilical prolapse, and postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, these are the big sort of meaty things that we might be able to see and we have to deal with and kind of know what to do if it happens. So, anytime you get this notification from the red phone saying, hey, something's coming in, the big thing to do is be prepared, right? You get help, you get your services, start, you know, assigning roles, who's taking care of what, who's taking care of who. Um, at least in our hospital, we have GYN, so, you know, the labor's coming in, call GYN, call NICU. You have the warmer in room three, you talk to PZR, PEDS comes to help as well. You're going to have two patients in a matter of seconds, and so one team handles the new infant, other team handles the uh, mom. Get your equipment ready, this is again... In case you're here, you have everything sort of set up, but in case you're in a community hospital, say like Minnesota somewhere, where nothing exists, um, you can have like sterile gloves, sterile equipment, um, scissors, cord clamp, make sure to turn on your warmer, uh, remember your neonatal resuscitation stuff in case you know, you're the person doing it, another team's handling the baby, handling the mom. And then the biggest thing is reassure mom. You know, if this is the first time mom she doesn't know anything, you gotta make sure to kind of walk her through it. This is mom that's going on, maybe she's had GYN do it all the other times, so make sure to talk to her, get communication between mom, between dad, or any other significant other. Uh, tell her to push to her contractions, and when the head comes out, kind of not push and breathe the contractions so that the head can come out. Uh, biggest thing, don't drop the baby, <laughs> right? The process happens pretty quickly if it happens normally, so you want to make sure to have hands on the baby, a nice little like sandwich on the baby, and kind of just follow it through. This is again for a normal delivery, which most of us have done. We had two weeks of L&D, so we've caught all our 10 babies and everything. After delivery, big things you need to do, right? Is again, reassure mom, delivery, the baby came out fine, hopefully. Uh, baby's being taken care of by somebody, so this is gonna, I'm not gonna focus on the actual neonatal stuff, I'm focusing on the mom. Uh, placenta comes next, right? You want to make sure you deliver the placenta. Uh, don't tug on the cord, and these are just sort of reminders. Um, you don't want the cord to rip. Uh, placenta will come out by itself for the most part. Sometimes it takes you know, longer than the two minutes you want it to come out. Sometimes it'll take about 30 minutes uh, or maybe a little bit longer, but make sure the placenta is delivered. Uh, there is, you know, you could do uterine massage too to prevent any sort of other complications that can happen. The big one, of course, is uh, uterine anatomy. Uh, and then oxytocin. This reduces postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, GYN kind of gives it pretty much after every delivery. Um, if you're in a setting, again, that doesn't have GYN, talk to the nurses, get oxytocin ready. If somebody's coming in, you get a notification for a late That's Just a quick intro. So our first patient today, 32-year-old Somalia descent, goes to the ED in Mankato, Minnesota. Again, low community ED. Uh, G2P1 has no prenatal care. It's 42 weeks pregnant, by LMP of what she says. Uh, and has a history of diabetes. Comes in saying this, I'm having a baby. And water's out and everything's going on. These are vitals, a little bit tacky, heart rate of 123. G1, again, it's not available, but NICU's here supposedly. There's peds in your emergency room in your hospital somewhere that are coming down. Uh, you put an IV place. Do a quick ultrasound, see what's going on. You see that the baby's in the right place, the head is kind of facing down, coming into the canal. You see this thing, and then this person takes over. Gosh. <laughs> okay. All right, All right. I'll turn it over to you. Hey, everybody. The twos, if you don't know me, we're going to talk about some shoulder dystocia today. Uh, so, a quick overview: three major things we want to go over: how to diagnose it, um, how to deal with it, and then some complications from shoulder dystocia. <coughs> sometimes, as a result of how you're managing it. Uh, so first, how to identify it? Um, there's a couple of telltale signs. The first few are somewhat more.
more subtle. On the right, this is supposed to demonstrate that you're just requiring a lot more traction than usual. Most of the time, you're sort of holding the head, gentle traction, the baby delivers itself. If it's taking a while, you feel like you have to pull a lot, and the baby still isn't coming, that's a first, like, maybe red flag, uh, warning bell sign that maybe this might be a stuck shoulder. The second one is the turtle sign that Bo alluded to. That's when the head comes out and then kind of like comes back. Almost like a turtle poking its head out and then coming back. So turtle sign. Um, it's also, again, pretty subtle. So unless you're just watching the baby the whole time. Um, so that usually in combination with the first one where you feel like you got to pull a little bit more is sort of like your warning bell signs. And to sort of confirm it, what you can do is actually stick a finger in there and feel for where that shoulder is and then also feel for where the pubic symphysis is and you'll likely feel the shoulder stuck behind the bones of the pubic symphysis and then you know that uh, you have shoulder dystocia. That also helps you to figure out which shoulder is the anterior shoulder. So when we say anterior shoulder, we mean the shoulder that's up. Um, so sometimes like the head might be like twisted around um, at, with the neck, so it's hard to tell where the shoulders actually are. So if you put your finger in the vagina and actually feel for where that stuck shoulder is, that's how you determine, yes, this is shoulder dystocia, and it's either the left shoulder is up or the right shoulder is up, and that's your anterior shoulder. All right, so we're just going to jump straight into sort of like a demonstration of how to do uh, some management of shoulder dystocia. Um, so the first thing that I want to demonstrate is a maternal maneuver. Can I get a couple of volunteers to come up and help me with my little sim? For starters, this is going to be our mom. And then <laughs> All right. So this is our mother, and she's like mid mid childbirth. We've identified shoulder dystocia, um, and the first maneuver we want to do is McRoberts. Does anyone know what McRoberts is? Exactly. Um, so instead of having like, can you hold one leg? Can you hold the other leg? Great. Instead of having it, you know, like a like a relaxed flexion when you're, you know, trying to give birth or when you're this sort of position <laughs> that uh, when you're doing a pelvic exam, we want to really hyper flex it. There you go. Exactly. And the whole idea behind this is this is going to open up the space between the pubic symphysis on top where it's trapping the shoulder and also like the sacrum and the coccyx below um, where it's also adding... Um, like reducing that space uh, for the delivery of the baby. So that's pretty simple. Next, we're gonna do some super pubic pressure. Oftentimes this is comboed with Ms. McRoberts maneuver. So if we can do McRoberts again. Yeah, and then have someone applying some super pubic <laughs> pressure. Yeah, perfect. And so the idea behind the super pubic pressure is you're pushing <laughs> against that stuck shoulder to push it out underneath uh, the pubic symphysis to deliver the baby. Perfect. Everyone smile, say cheese. It's <laughs> going on the gram. <laughs> All right. And then the last the maternal maneuver that I want to go over, it's a little bit more rare, uh, but it's something that doesn't require a lot of like crazy stuff on your part or an ob guy's part. It's simply the Gaskin maneuver, and that's asking mom to get on all fours. So maybe if we can help our mom. <laughs> position. If you do yoga, maybe like a little cat-cow position. Um, and then you'll be putting traction on the fetal head here to deliver the baby. And again, to increase that space between the sacrum, the coccyx, and the pubic symphysis to widen the space for delivery of the baby. Alright, don't move. Got a couple more. Now we're going to talk about some fetal maneuvers and enter our vagina. <laughs> Alright. Um, which way are we going to Oh my god. Can someone hold the, stabilize the vagina for me? Alright. Maybe let's have the baby come in from that way. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, so 
so, so, so we got baby stuck. Does someone want to feel and tell me which shoulder is anterior? Left. Left. <laughs> right. Okay. That's our anterior shoulder. So the Rubin maneuver um, actually deals with moving the anterior shoulder from under the pubic symphysis. There's two ways you can rotate, clockwise or counterclockwise. One of them is normal Rubens, the other one is reverse Rubens, um, and it sort of depends on which way the baby is facing. For normal Rubens, you're rotating the anterior shoulder towards the chest. So you want to try that. Great. And then the baby pops right out. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then the, the reverse, you're also still dealing with the anterior shoulder, but you're actually pushing and you're opening the shoulder posterior. But from, but from the front, so from the anterior aspects of the anterior shoulder. Exactly, so rotate towards the baby's back and slip that shoulder out from under the pubic symphysis and then deliver the baby. Perfect. All right, so that's Ruben's um, The next one, let's, let's get our baby stuck again. Uh, is the posterior arm delivery. So again, we have a baby that's stuck. And this time, we're going to reach in inferiorly to feel the posterior arm. Yeah. <laughs> and what you're going to do is you're going to feel for that, like, all the way to the end of that hand of the baby. And you're going to bend that elbow towards the baby's chest and bring that hand up Cross the face to deliver the posterior arm. And then pull the baby up. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> All right. And then the last maneuver is the wood screw maneuver. So this one deals with the posterior shoulder and rotating the baby. So the easy way to remember between like Rubin maneuver and wood screw is that you're rotating the baby and just matters which shoulder you're grabbing. So Reuben is always the anterior shoulder or the up shoulder, and then Wood's maneuver is the posterior or inferior shoulder. Again, like Reuben, the Wood screw maneuver, you can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. One of them is normal Wood's, one of them is reverse Wood's, and again, it depends on which way the baby is facing. Um, but for Wood's, you put your hand in, uh, and for the normal woods, you put it on the posterior aspect of the posterior shoulder, and you sort of push that shoulder towards the baby's chest in the center as you rotate the baby out. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. And then for the reverse woods, you're going to the anterior aspect of the posterior shoulder and then rotating towards the back as you push. Perfect. Any questions with that? Was that too fast? Did anybody, everyone was able to see that? Great. Okay. Um, and then I just want to kind of go over the process of when do you do all these maneuvers? How do you know which one to do first? Um, do you do them all at the same time? How long do you wait or try different ones? So there's a little mnemonic that you can use when recognize so new dystocia. If you have these available, the first step is to call for help, call for OB, call for PICU, sort of alert anesthesia in case this ends up uh, becoming like an emergency C-section. Okay, so H stands for help. <laughs> e, um, episiotomy. Uh, this is sort of coming into like controversy with new data, but Traditionally, the E has stood for evaluate for physiotomy, see if uh, lengthening the vaginal opening will allow for delivery of the shoulder. There are some smaller studies coming out that are saying maybe that doesn't actually change um, outcomes. 
uh, in terms of being able successful delivery and has more um, rates of like maternal hemorrhage. Obviously, you have a big laceration and cut to sew up after you do an episiotomy. Um, so that's what that star is for. The L in helper is legs. Um, so that tells you the first maneuver that you should try, which is the Roberts maneuver, again, the hyperflexion of the legs. Pressure, again, a maternal maneuver, the suprapubic pressure. So those are pretty easy to do. You don't have to touch a baby if you're scared of touching a little squirmy thing. Start with the, the McRoberts and the suprapubic. And as you can see in this picture, they're doing both at the same time. E, the second E stands for enter the vagina. So the Rubens or the wood screw maneuvers. So that's where you're going in and you're picking either the anterior or the posterior shoulder, the turn, which way, and that will sort of be based on your evaluation of the position of the shoulder, how stuck is it, is it more stuck underneath the pubic symphysis, or is there maybe something in like the sacrum or the coccyx that's actually blocking it and you feel like it'd be better to deliver the post or twist the posterior shoulder more than the anterior shoulder. Okay? Uh, the first R is remove the arm. Um, our posterior arm delivery method where you're reaching in, you're crossing that arm across the chest and the face and then delivering that arm first before the rest of the body to sort of stretch the baby out into a, a smaller diameter to deliver through the pelvis. Uh, and then the last R is roll, the Gaskin maneuver that we talked about where we put mom on all fours if she's able to tolerate that um, and try to this is not like an exhaustive list of all the things to do, but a good start and a great mnemonic for what to do and the basic maneuvers to do. So again, a review, helper, stands for call for help, evaluate for episiotomy, like Robert's maneuver for the legs, superpubic pressure, um, entering the vagina to do any twisting of the anterior posterior arm, removing the posterior arm with that sort of cross body and face maneuver, and then rolling the patient onto all fours to see if that helps. All right, um, really quickly, uh, going into some complications from this maneuver, or from these maneuvers and other ones that GYN may feel more comfortable uh, performing. Uh, brachial plexus injury, especially when you're moving a lot of the arm, it's just a lot of tugging pressure, um, you can get a brachial plexus injury. This picture is of the classic like herbs palsy uh, that you can get. A clavicle fracture, this could be either intentional or unintentional as part of the delivery process, um, very frequent in neonates. Um, humerus fracture, again, moving the arm, squeezing on the arm, especially when you're doing the posterior arm delivery. If you're putting your hand in, you're trying to get it across like the chest or the face, you may accidentally break the humerus or you may intentionally break that to make the arm more available for delivery. Um, and then sort of the hypoxis, brain injury, and death is from the prolonged delivery. And then some maternal complications. Tears are most common. You're already dealing with probably a smaller pelvis, a larger baby. So there's a lot more stress on the tissues there, so tears are a lot more common. Bladder injury, if the tears are that severe or just because of proximity of the bladder to everything that's going on with the delivery. Um, postpartum hemorrhage baseline is a complication, um, but it can be worse when you have shoulder dystocia because you're doing a lot of maneuvers, you're inserting your hand, you're moving mom around, um, so more likely to have that. Symphysial separation um, is oftentimes when like OB might go in and actually do a symphysiotomy where they cut uh, the ligament between the pubic symphysis. Um, but it, they can also separate as a result of the force and the traction that you're putting on to deliver the baby. Um, and then a rectovaginal fistula. This is more of like a late complication um, as the body is recovering from it's a pretty traumatic uh, delivery uh, amongst like other fistulas. This is not an exhaustive list, but some of the most common complications. Um, so yeah, just a quick summary. How to diagnose shoulder dystocia management. We went over some techniques, we demonstrated them. The helper mnemonics to sort of help walk you through what do I do, when, who do I call to help, what's the order of the things that I should try, um, and then some complications to both the fetus and the mom from dealing with shoulder dystocia. Alright, and that's it. Back to
uh, more practical thing. We'll turn it over to Dr. Russo. in, 
and I'm feeling shoulders and I'm rotating shoulders with the suprapubic at the same time. Rotating this way, if it's not coming out, and then you kind of try to rotate the other way in order to dislodge it from that shoulder. Um, if they're feeling that the rotation isn't quite working, then they sweep that posterior arm up across the body to give, um, you're decreasing the diameter of the shoulder so you can um, get it through that pelvic inlet. And again, when you're sweeping shoulder, you're not sweeping behind, you're really just cupping around where the humerus is and you're pulling it across the body and up and out. All else fails, roll her over, do it again. Um, a couple of things to note, you are kind of doing all the maneuvers at the same time. It's not quite stepwise, like first I'm going to try this shoulder. Okay, now I'm going to put both hands in and do both shoulders. You're kind of doing everything all at once. It's just for the sake of learning and mnemonic. Um, it's easy to think about it kind of in a stepwise fashion. Other, a little bit more dramatic um, maneuvers, all those fails, they need to go to C-section. You're going to put your hand in, and you're going to shove baby up, off of pubic symphysis, up into the uterus, and you're going to the OR. Um, so let's practice. So I have some low fidelity models over here. If you guys want to gather around a table, um, you can break up, I guess, into your CBL groups if that's helpful, or your upper group if that's helpful. <laughs> Otherwise, we're hands on. Tail isn't there. Record. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. So the butt out. So what you want to do is kind of have your hand in there, and kind of your 